Hi there, welcome to a special edition of the Greenock Morton Weekly Update, as sponsored by McTears, the Auctioneers. Well, for the lower leagues in Scotland, the season is over, officially. So let's look back at the campaign that was 2019-20 and look ahead to the following season, which we're all looking forward to, with the Greenock Morton manager, David Hopkins. David, good morning to you. Morning, Jerry. How are you? I'm very well. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I think we could both do it with a haircut, though, eh? Yeah, well, my wife tried last night, Jerry, because I knew I was going to do it. <laughs> you should use a knife and fork, yeah. Yeah, well, I think it's better than the last one I got. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're coming up um, about a month away now from the anniversary of uh, you joining the club. Uh, you know, and what were your expectations when you arrived at Morton last year? Yeah, well, also I'd, I'd spoke to the board, I'd, I'd met Dave McKinnon and uh, I knew that what the, the budget was going to be, it was going to be a reduced budget from last the, the season before and uh, we knew it was going to be a, a season of transition. I think when we turned up we had three or four players signed, or players who potentially had uh, contracts to, to be renegotiated because they'd played a certain amount of games. Uh, delighted that the, the players, Bob McHugh and Jim McAllister, Midge all, all decided to stay on and uh, it was good and as I say we, we came in and we, we had to try and build the club from a different perspective to where it's probably used to, uh, to working on and uh, we knew it was going to be difficult, we knew the first season was going to be and obviously I knew that the first six months of taking over any job is critical and where you want to go and uh, I'd spoke to Dave McKinnon, I'd spoke to Crawford and the board and told them that it was going to take time and then we had to get players in who were maybe a bit younger, maybe hadn't played as much football, and it was going to take us time to, to coach them. But this is a, as the season went on, it progressed. Uh, the, the players were fantastic. Even the, I spoke to a few experienced players, and uh, it said it's been the best changing they've been in, really enjoyed it. And I said I've really enjoyed working with all experienced players and the younger players at the club. So it's been, I think it's been a, a successful season from where we are. I thought uh, we, we, we started where we, we probably thought we could have done a bit better in the first three, four months of the season. Maybe we could have picked up a few more wins, a few more points. But I says from the from the turn of the year onwards, I thought the, we were getting to where we wanted to get to and I thought the players were superb. Looking back at those early days of the season, at home, I think it was something like you were unbeaten uh, for quite a, a number of games, uh, right through to about October or so. It was just the inconsistency away from home that was costing you. Yeah, I think uh, our home form is pretty good. I think we've made some big results here. I think the the party game were two 0 down and won three two. Uh, we beat, managed to beat Dundee at home, which was a was a great boost for us. But you see, on on the road was a wee bit different. I just thought sometimes you go away and you're playing games, and some players prefer playing at home. Some players take time to adjust, and I think we, we were at a, a stage where we we brought in seventeen or eighteen new players. And it takes time for everybody to gel. But I think uh, it's impossible to go through a whole season without getting a, a win on the road. And I just kept saying to the players, you have to believe in it. We made some bad results. The Dundee United game, the Inverness game away. And uh, I think when we played both teams three, four months down the line, we were a completely different team to what we were earlier in the season. Can I put it to you that a turning point in the season was going up to Broader Rangers and getting that result in the Scottish Cup, having drawn at home in perhaps a game that you might have felt we should have won, you know. But that, that seemed to be a real turning point for the team just before Christmas. Yeah, I think everybody, when you get a Highland League team or a lower league team in the Scottish Cup, it's always going to be difficult. Uh, I thought Broader Rangers played exceptionally well down here. I think they've got a good team, very good team, ex-players, uh, professional players. But going up there on a Tuesday night in a replay, difficult situation, but I thought uh, we're not there and we put on a, a very good performance. I think 3-1 kind of flattered Brona. I think we could have, we should have enough chances to win the game at Capital. But as you say, it got the, the first away win, I think, in a very difficult venue. And uh, I think from there, I think the players started to believe that maybe maybe we could go on and, and win a few more games because obviously our home form was fine. And as I said, if you wanted to do in the league, you want to start winning games away from home. But... I think it was well documented if it hadn't. But if you look through the league, Jerry, there's there's not a lot of teams in the championship that win a lot of games away from home. It's mostly mm-hmm. their, their home form that either gets them to a playoff or keeps them in the league. or Because it's a difficult league to come in and get away from home. And, and uh, as I say, once, once we won that game, I think the players get great belief from it. 
you creep up to the cliche about a season of two halves, but certainly getting that result away at our growth, the 2 1 victory just uh, into the new year, that really set the run off, didn't it? I think it was nine out of 10 games uh, undefeated. And then even the defeated game was like a 93rd winner from uh, Inverness Cali. Yeah. As I say, we, we, we went to a broth, another very uh, difficult place to go. Their, their home form is excellent. And I say we, to get that 2-1 win there was, was brilliant because I think we'd just been uh, lost 2-1 at home to Partick Thistle the week before. Uh, we didn't play particularly well. But as I say, the, the players responded greatly. We went there, got a massive three points. And then I think after we got the away win, then the, the players' confidence just went, went that bit more. Uh, the belief... And as I say, we, we kept our home form up. And as I say, we managed to win well, nine out of ten games, as you mind, mentioned, until it was in the nest. And the last kick of the ball was, was a hard one to take because I think we deserved a point. And it could have been a massive point going forward. But we, we, we keep going back to where, where we were in the beginning of the season and, and where we were finishing the season. You see, we've nine, nine games out of ten. We've lost one in the last kick of the ball. And uh, the season, the... The players are feeling in good, good spirits. And as I say, we were only far away from the playoffs. With teams with United and Inverness and Dundee, everybody thought it was a fantastic season. There were only four or five points in front of us. February was a big month, personally for yourself and also for Nicky Cadden, picking up you know, Player of the Month, you get Manager of the Month. I know you don't like to talk about that, David, but I think that was a pretty pivotal month in the season. Yeah, I think both were. I think January and February were. I think we had a fantastic January too, and uh, and February. So, these accolades are fantastic to get, especially I think if you're a player. I think Nicky's probably delighted that you've, you've been voted the best player in the league for that particular month because I think from January he was fantastic right through to February, and obviously I managed to get the the manager a month awards myself, which is which is great. But it's a it's an accolade for everybody that works at a club. I think everybody puts the hard work in, and, and it says that these are the things where. Uh, your staff, everybody at the club, board members, staff behind the scenes, everybody works that hard. To me. These are the types of things where you, you know you're going the right direction. Even though I get the manager in one, it shows you about how far we've came in six months as a club. Has there been a highlight of the season? I know a lot of people point down at the Queen of the South, 4 0 away victory, comprehensive as you could get against a decent side. But I mean, for you, was there a particular game or a moment that highlighted the season for you? Yeah, no, I, I just think it's, it's everything else, Jerry. I think when you win games, it, it's it's not so much you enjoy, mate. It's, it's more relief. that you, you win a game, then you, you come in on Monday and the place is a wee bit more happy and buzzing. But I say we, we've, we've had some great results. I think the, the Dundee United game away, after being beat probably comprehensively in the, the beginning of the season there and, and going up there and, and seeing how far we, we came, you know, let's kick the ball again and we, we lose a goal to uh, 93rd minute so it, it's difficult but my, my biggest thing Jerry is, is, is seeing the players progress that's, that's all you see if I can see players come in and they're enjoying coming to work they're enjoying uh, training there's a good atmosphere and, and I see a player developing and I think over the season I've seen every player develop even the older players and uh, they, they've got that bit between their teeth now and everybody's really buying into what you're trying to do so it's been these are things as a manager that I like I like to see progression and there's no better progression when you see players enjoying coming to work, and I think we've seen that. Obviously, we've been coming in on a weekly basis, David, to talk to yourself and to talk to the players, and when you get in amongst the players at that kind of level, you do see the camaraderie and the bond between the boys, which is different from maybe what it was right back at the start of the season. Yeah, and as I say, Jerry, you're, you're bringing in 15, 16, 17 new players who probably don't know each other, and I, th- I think it takes uh, time. To, to gel and bond but as you say the longer even when we, in, early in the season we weren't winning games there, there was never a uh, we came into training and everyone was dull and boring and everybody was just sitting not talking to anybody that uh, has been building from the probably first day we walked in everybody's in it together and kind of thing and everybody's just fine it's like going anywhere just trying to find out people's uh, what makes them tick what they don't like you know what I mean but as I say, we'd, we'd never ever panicked from when we come in the door because it says we always had a, a plan to go and follow the new that once the players are up to speed and once the players had a, an idea and an identity and I think that was the biggest thing we were starting to get at the club's identity how we wanted to play football and hopefully get more fans seen that 
Is that the frustration thing for you now that you know there's only eight or nine games left in the season? The club were looking up the way rather than looking down. I mean, what were your aspirations towards the end of the season? Did you actually think you could get to the playoffs? I, I think most people would have probably thought the players certainly would have, and I think if we'd have seen the form we, we were on, to as I say nine unbeaten out of ten is is probably championship stuff. That's like Dundee United, Dundee, all the bigger teams in your league and Vernesses would, would like to go on that kind of run. And uh, I think we were going into the last eight games. I think we were getting fitter, we were getting stronger mentally. This is uh, probably a growth game just at the end, probably typified how. How fit and how good we were because I, I watched the game back. People might say oh, it was it wasn't a greatest game, but you've got to give a broth great credit. It was your fifth game or something in twelve days, and to to go back and score an equaliser right now in the last tether, yeah, a game's fantastic. So, uh, no, it's 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 one of these things now you don't know because we all we are, everybody's talking about different different things now going on in leagues, but we you look at it, we're only four points behind there. United who are in fourth. And uh, I think everybody now where we were, I think we were we were in a good we were in a good place. I think we were starting to get in as it says. I think we would have probably on in one another two, three, four games. So you never know what could have happened, but certainly we would have been pushing to try and catch here United as Dunfell and our growth probably would have been too. I mean I was in and around the club obviously a couple of days before the Dundee United game that, that was eventually of course postponed. But you could feel the atmosphere and the excitement building up to a big game and the confidence factor around the club I thought was remarkable. Yeah, I think that comes from the the run we were on. It says uh, when you're winning games you're not getting beaten, you're going to every game feeling as if you're going to get something out of the game. And as you said, we were training on a Friday and obviously the game we called off and it was a it was disappointing. Financially for the club, but I think also for the players and the fans. Because I think it was a game everyone was looking forward to. I think Dundee United have brought a, a good amount of fans with them. And uh, but as you said, we were probably into that game thinking that at that stage, why not? Can we not win it? Because we already played them. Uh, at Paradise, we played in a catwalk here, and I thought probably that performance that night was fantastic. But the difference is we we conceded two goals and we only scored one. And th- these are these things where. Uh, the aspirations of your club is to try and get up as far up as you can you can get. And to go and match Dundee United that night, a 2-1 game here, and then also at Tanadice, I think everybody thought we'd have a wee chance against something like the game that Saturday. Yeah, it is unfortunate, isn't it? I mean, we've been in this situation now for five or six weeks. From the perspective of you as a manager and the players, how have you guys coped with this? I think it's been it's been difficult. I think we just need to look and see what's going on throughout the world. People are losing their lives to it. It's, it's difficult. And uh, everybody's in the, the, the same thing, but everybody's in lockdown. It's it's difficult. It's difficult for footballers. I'm sure it's difficult for everybody. I think you're, you're sitting in your house for, as you say, the past five weeks. And uh, I said, you, you can only do so much. You're doing your gardening, you're doing painting, you're doing things that you probably you, you, you'd never do. You never get a chance to do it. so. From that perspective, it's good. But as I say, the main thing now is make sure we get through this and make sure everybody's safe and well. And hopefully, uh, we get back playing football when that is. Nobody knows, but I think the the, mo- the main thing is is to make sure that everybody out through the world is, is safe and well. Okay, well let's look ahead then, because I remember talking to you in February for the weekly update, and you were actually planning ahead for next season. Uh, I mean, obviously, plans have had to be put into a certain disarray because of the situation that we're in at the moment. But what are your aspirations for the new season? Yeah, I just think it's we've we've already got ten players signed up. I think we we, we tried to get the, the, the younger players under twenty three tied up in contracts so we could uh, hopefully build on some from from last season and maybe push it forward this year. Honestly what's happened in the world just now, nobody really knows what, when we're going to be back playing or different things from contracts of players that are out. So hopefully we're, we're looking over the next couple of weeks to see if uh, the league gets finished in the Premier League and then we can kind of start a plan for next season. But it's difficult because nobody's got a time scale of when we're coming back. And uh, But no, as I said, we're, we're looking to build on hopefully where we were uh, last season. Uh, and I think obviously we, we, there's players we'll, we have to have a chat with. And I say it's difficult because players are going to ask the same questions and until we get clari- clarification of where we are, then it's difficult. But we're just hoping that we can build on last year, Jerry, and 
hopefully get some more players signed up and some more players in and, and makes that bit stronger and hopefully can push further up the league this year. David, we're looking really looking forward actually to seeing you and the boys back training again and back out on the pitch. But thanks for joining us today. No problem, Jerry. Thanks very much. And I say hope everybody stays safe and well and we get through this and we get through it together. Well said, David. And thank you for joining us on the Greenock Morton Update as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers.